So I'm walking, I'm walking, hitting the freaking, you know, I'm trying to break any laws and such, you know, cross the street. And then I'm at the corner though, the kid had like a little scooter bike, same kid with the jacket, the coat and everything, his mom looked pretty good. Mom looked pretty good. And he, I'm waiting for the light to cross the street to go where I live at in the building at. And he's like, hey, you all right, man? I'm like, yeah, man, thanks for asking, but I, but I like your, uh, your coat. It's, you know, it's flashy, you know? With the kids, though, the kids, they, they look more, more uh, um, serious, right? They look more intelligent than the, the average dude that wake up. So he left and everything. I crossed the street, banked up my burritos and my, was left in my strawberry shake in the fridge. And I, you know, uh, but uh, I grabbed a, a thing of water and I went to the corner store, right? So I huckled down to the corner store and I bought a bunch of uh, mac and cheese and uh, some uh, roasted peanut nuts, top ramen. They got the Japanese noodles up in that store, right? So, yeah. So it cost me 29 bucks, $29. But not only yesterday, though, I was walking yesterday, right? You all won't believe what I found yesterday, though. I might break it out of my wallet. I was walking yesterday, I was hungry, I had nothing to eat, I had to get 212, I had to get 212 in subs. So I was walking, and I was tired too, my, my leg wasn't acting right. So I was walking, I went, ahead, I went you know, out my building, went to the subway, I saw money on the floor, actual green money, currency money, American dollars on the floor in the grass, and I see people, cars rolling by, I know people are looking at it, right? So I looked at it, and it's like a $20, $20 bill, I mean, maybe one or two, maybe a bunch of them, you know, a stack of them or something, fold it up, sitting there, right? So I didn't think nothing of it, you know? I go to the subway, I use my card, right? So I got my two subs, a spicy uh, Italian sub, and a dark forest ham sub, right? So ratchet sauce, you know, I docker it all up, lettuce, tomatoes, you know? Uh, olive oil, I mean olives and such. So I get back to my, I, I, so I walk out the thing, I said, said to myself, the $20 bill still in the grass, I'll pick it up and that's just that, right? And sure enough, it was still sitting there. So I, I bent over like tying my shoe. This dude was at the, at the gazebo looking at me with the tank top and you know, he was smoking a cigarette or something. So I was like, you know, I had a pain in my, my leg and I picked up the bill and I you know, not, and picked up my headphones and put the money in my wallet, you know, back pocket, but I put it in my back pocket, right? Like I'm scratching myself. And I, went, I didn't know what it was. I, I'm sure it was a $20 bill, so, you know, but now I take the steps, so, so. <laughs> so I was walking up the steps with my two 12 inch subs. That didn't even cost 20 bucks, right? And I break up, you know, when you walk up the steps and take a break, and, it's $20 bill. I'm like, yeah, this looks really good. So I went, you know, went in, washed my hands, you know, put in my wallet, and then announced that. Uh, I thought something else, was, something else was funny. Yeah, right? So, oh yeah, I thought some jokes too, right? So they have these, uh, <laughs> they have these technology machines, refrigerators for people that need technology enhanced to help them through life and such. Can you imagine like, walking to the refrigerator, your own refrigerator, right? Dun, dun, dun. All right, open up. Okay, Snickers, where are you? Where's the Snickers? Come on out. And, and it's not there, you're going to the refrigerator, right? <laughs> All right, Snickers. And you're like, okay. And you're like, refrigerator, what happened to the Snickers I bought? And the refrigerator pipes up and starts talking to you like, well, four hours ago, you ate the last Snickers. And you're like, four hours ago? I was asleep four hours ago. And it, and it shows, the refrigerator shows the evidence on the screen, not the, like a panel screen. That is you, get the Snickers, in the middle of the, of the, middle of the night, <laughs> that's you. <laughs> Time to argue with your refrigerator. <laughs> So you wake up out of bed, boom. <laughs> All right, open up the fridge. Where are you, Snickers? <laughs> Snickers. <laughs> Here's your goes. That's the evidence, that's you. Get in the last Snickers. I want her, case dismissed. So you close the refrigerator door and that's the evidence of you eating the last Snickers that you don't remember. You can do that though, you know? Yeah. Wait.
So, that's that. So I'm gonna watch some like documentaries and such on the YouTube. Either I'm signed in or not even signed in. It's we're looking at it. <sighs> so, I'm letting my um, keyboards breathe. See my keyboards right there? Yeah, man, let my keyboards breathe, breathe. Get some air up in here on my, my keyboards. Well, anyway, so I'm watching this documentary about uh, BET uh, rap labels and rap rap moguls and such, right? How they got up and everything. See, I grew up, you know, I kind of grew up on the Gulf Coast between Panama City and Pensacola in the early 90s and such, you know? So, but my man, I always want, I always wanted to go to New Orleans and such. But my, you know, everybody that I came across went goes to New Orleans, and they come back a little bit different though. They come back pretty, uh, I would say, entertained, right? And I always wanted to go to New Orleans and such. But, oh, I got the same radio station in New Orleans. People from New Orleans, you know, 93 BLX. But anyway, I'm gonna get the point. And this documentary on the uh, BET networks, but I'm watching it on the YouTube thing. I'm watching it on the YouTube thing, right? And it's about Master P and how he, uh, the, the rapper Master P and the No Limit thing, the tank and everything, how they came to be and such. So, I'm watching that. And my man was Corey Miller though, man, I liked him. He's like, he's good with that microphone, right? But I really want to know how he came up, how he came into the in the picture of No Limit Records and such. So I'm watching like from the horse's mouth, from Master P's mouth, how they become. And I watched other videos. Well, he said that Master P's older brother died, and uh, Corey Miller was in that was in the military. Before that, I knew Corey Miller was in the military, but I didn't know what kind of profession the military was. So later on in the documentary, he was a medic, a med medic with hospital stuff. Right, so he he went he quit his like went AWOL and then like got discharged and went to a funeral, um, because like someone died in the family. I think Master P's older brother died or his malpractice of of his grandpa died, and it got malpractice lawsuit or something something that made some that made notion. But anyway, so um, and they wanted to be a rapper and such, and then. People are like talking controversy about, you know, like it's a, it's a family situation and Corey Miller's locked up in prison and such. But after lo and behold, it tells me that Corey Miller had a good heart. He was in the military and uh, he was a medic. That being said, he had, that means he had a good heart and he's like really good, you know, genius, Da Vinci, da Vinci type, borderline Howard Hughes type genius with the microphone, you know? So that's how I look at it though, of Corey Miller, you know, that's who I like back then. But I couldn't get the albums and such. And I also like the Wu-Tang at that time. And uh, I had to live in Panama City, but I didn't like going to Pensacola though, because they're, they're with the Navy and such, and they got technology and such. Let me tell you a story about my dad. My dad, when my dad was alive, he had a one, of, at one point, he had a one of a kind job for the Air Force. But he wasn't an officer though. Well, in Panama City, the cops beat, his, beat him up, beat him down. While he was still in the Air Force with the one of a kind job, getting close to retirement. Anyway, so the police can do that to my dad that's in the military, in the government, with the one of a kind job. What do they think they're going to do to anybody else? Right? Think about it. Right. That's an officer or no officer or who played ball. Or don't play ball with with uh, domestic policing, you know. So it makes you wonder, though, right? So so I lived in Panama City twice in my life. The first time I lived there, lived, lived by the VFW, and I'm a good listener. I used to listen to the people, veterans of foreign wars, inside the bar or whatever establishment, and they don't talk about wars. They just talk about world fortune. Back then, watch college football, and, they, and Peyton Manning was, was in college football at the time. And they're talking to me like, "You think you go pro?" I'm like, "Well, that, he's talented. I grant you that. He's very talented." But we talk about Will Fortune, you know, trying to be sharp with the mentals and such, you know, for, uh, 
eating breakfast in the morning, you know, with these soldiers that actually were in the military, right? An index where you have to use your, use your card to get into this facility with air conditioning and such. Well, I'm going with that because I volunteered for that the first time I was in Panama City. The second time I was in Panama City, the internet was popping off. And, uh, one of a kind, one of a kind job is, a uh, yeah, one of a kind job is chief, no, the chief of wartime readiness. Chief of fire, chief of fire protection of wartime readiness for emergencies, stuff like that. You know, best of the best of fire protection and emergencies and all that good such. But he retired. The day he retired, he wanted to smoke, smoke, smoke marijuana with me. And I smoked every kind of marijuana in, in Fort Walton Beach, Eglin Air Force Base, you know, and some military bases near Air Force bases in Panama City and such. So he gives me a marijuana joint. His 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 buddy got in boot camp when he first entered the military. He gave me a mil he gave me a, a marijuana joint back in 1997. And then that's the last time I got smoked marijuana with my dad. It was a solo because I don't pass blunt anymore. My dad gave this marijuana solo. It was green and everything. And I had friends that were in the first war of a uh, Gulf War. So I smoked Saudi cigarettes and I had a Japanese cigarettes, light tobacco. But this marijuana my dad gives me is a solo. And he had a solo and I smoked it. That's the highest I've ever got. I smoked all kinds of marijuana from Compton, you know, that early 93 and such, you know, and um, hydroponic weed and such, crypto weed and such. But this marijuana leaf, marijuana plant, is, is, it was green. And my dad's been to South America in the full of Pablo's and Escobar error and other errors and such. Anyway, so. This is 97, we had this marijuana uh, solo. And that's the highest, that's the last time and the highest I've ever got. And it's with my dad, the day he retired from the Air Force. Right. And then, you know, yeah, so that's that. He died like April 29th of this year over COVID or the viruses and such. So, uh, yeah. But I have a stepmother that from, from his side that he married in Ecuador. Her name is Sonia. She she doesn't know English, but I have a half sister. She knows English and American, but it's good. And also on the other side, my mom from Scotland, Glasgow, biological. She died. Her husband, which was he was an officer in the military, Air Force, but he came from Bangor, Maine. Officer from Bangor, Maine. He he met my mom in Fort Walton Beach, Florida. He dealt with like. Uh, he, he tells the pilots in the air what the what the up on the ground. Usually other military uh, airfields. Well, he came from uh, Bangor, Maine, and he met my mom and everything. And they got married. They went to Guam. I went to I went to Panama City to live with my dad. That's why 96, 97 and such. They came back from Guam, extracted me from Panama City, and we, I ended up in St. Louis when the St. Louis won the Super Bowl and such. And the Sosas and the Mark McGuire's are hitting home runs over the fence and such. So, uh, yeah, so, uh, I don't know. That's the one I got my chat, man, here 18 for you. So, uh, yeah, I wanted to be military. I don't know, anyway, so, yeah, so, I gotta use a restroom. Yeah. Hmm. Well, A up. Monkers, Leeds, oh, United, you're British, you're American? I mean, you're English? I've been to England in 86 and 87 when they had the air show in SR-71. Oh, how about this? Air, air, uh, SR-71, the black dildo, the black dildo, I spent a luxury bus. Well, the black dildo is back. Did you miss us? We missed you. <laughs> A message, a message, a message from the people that work for the Black Dildo, Air, SR-71. Now it's like the SR something 76 or something, right? So, uh, we're back, it's back. Did you miss us? We missed you. <laughs> this time, this time we have attitude. This time the, the Dildo has attitude. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Yeah, so I thought arthritis, my foot all messed up. You know, that kid, he, he looked like he, he looked like he had a nice leather coat and mom looked, and mom looked good. But that kid, you know, he looked like um, he related to somebody in Nashville, so I don't know, I don't, I don't know. But he had, uh, what do you call that? Uh, nerve or cano cano cannolis or, uh, you know, kahunas, yeah, kahunas, right? So, I mean, he wasn't really close to me and such, but he didn't, he didn't have a mask though, I had a mask, right? So, you know, across the road, I had a bank of burritos and what, what you have, Doritos. You know, go, you know, so I'm gonna go, so, yeah, oh, I, I, I had, I play cards. All right. I played cards. I did myself a, a deck of cards. Well, that's what I got. Three twos and two kings. That's the blue deck, right? Nate always wins, right? Yeah, three twos. See the three twos in it? In it? Yeah, right there. See that? Yeah, three twos. And the other deck, the other set was the red deck. And it got like, this is what it got. It got an ace, an ace, three eights, and a three, spade. And I always deal out the red deck first. See that? Yeah, I always deal out the red deck first. It's the red deck right here. So I'm thinking, okay, so I got three eights, and an ace, thinking like all confident that no one, I deal out, I deal out these, I deal out these, uh, I deal out these hands periodically like once a week or so. So, you know, and I, and I know, but on it's based on experience, based on experience of uh, the blue deck, the blue deck always wins, right? The blue deck always wins, right? About 90, 80% of the time, 80% of the time, the blue deck always wins. I'm like, the blue deck ain't gonna be a three of the three eights and an ace and a three, right? But sure enough, I've got three twos in a row, just step the eight and nine, and got two kings. I'm like, <laughs> it was all on the fly though. I don't like cheap and such. And <laughs> every time I get on here, I gotta use the restroom and such. So, yeah. Yeah, that's the X7 over there. The keyboard is the X7. I took my money out of the stock market and bought an X7. Here it is. So what goes in the Sam Ash, get an X7. See the X7 right there? That's what the professionals use. And that, it was like $2,400. And now it's not working much. Because it's like, uh, and the other keyboard is an FA06. It's rolling, right? So that's good, you know. But that F that FA06. That FA06 over the black one versus the gray one. Well, the black one, the FA06, has twice as much sounds as the X7. But, uh. Yeah, that black keyboard has twice as much sounds as the gray keyboard, but it's half the prices of the gray keyboard. The gray keyboard is older. So listen now, if you get caught cheating people, you'll take beating the same? I don't know. No, I think it's more, more of a, a integrity or something, a, a, a moral, ethical. To me, it's ethical. I don't like to cheat that much. I, I grew up cheating and such. What you're playing, blackjack? No, it's poker. Like, uh, I think it's like five, five card stud or something. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm 44 though, so I gotta go use the restroom soon. Yeah, I found 20 bucks on the ground. I can't believe it. So I'm gonna go. So y'all take care of people. All right. 25 should be sufficient. A chopper right there. Chopper. You know, like that. <laughs> All right. All right. Peace out. <laughs>